Hi, this is Simon Chan, and welcome to my network marketing training. Members of my coaching uh, mastermind groups can ask questions on a weekly uh, basis, any tips or advice. And today's question comes from Josie, uh, Vance Diamond Mastermind member. And Josie actually has a couple questions here. She says, uh, Simon, what is the best way to get people in one team to work together? I have observed that the Gen Ys tend to bond together more in MIM than in the older generation. Would that be a general assumption or is it unique in my overseas team? Uh, my team in Australia are also the older generation. However, they get they go on well, they get on well and work as a team. Uh, so let's go through this part and then you have a second question we'll go uh, in, a, in a little bit, Josie. Uh, so Josie, um, the best way to get the team to work together. Now, it seems that you have two teams there. Uh, you have a Gen Y team and the uh, older team in the uh, in the overseas, right? And I know you have a big team in the Philippines. I think you know it's not just the team in general, in a team um, in, in MLM, but in general, people of different demographics and age groups bond together differently, right? Uh, I mean, if you go out on the streets, you go out to the shopping malls, um, or in you know, restaurants, bars, the young people tend to hang out together, and the older people tend to hang out together. Or maybe in, in the young crowd goes to this one bar or restaurant, the older people may not even want to go there, right? So generally, it's harder to bring people of different age groups together. Um, also, if it's a very young crowd, the older people may be turned off and not interested in going there, right? They're too young and too rowdy. Or maybe if it's an older, you know, um, place to hang out, uh, younger people may not want to go there. They think it's too boring, right? So in general, it's not just unique to network marketing. Um, it's uh, it, it's everywhere in life. Now, if you say Gen Y tend to bond more in MLM. Um, I would say I agree with you there because they have more time, simply, right? So if they're bonding together, I think you're doing a good job in leadership and getting them together. Um, we had talked about before, you know, people stay in network marketing because of uh, not only do they make money, but the benefits of the product, but more importantly, the community, right? The community, uh, people love the, the fun, the friendships, um, even if they're not making money or they're just learning, or they haven't had that much success yet, they may be still involved, or they're earning a little bit, not full time, they're still involved because of the community. And I think, so if you're doing that, I think that's great. And Gen Ys do tend to bond more simply because they have more time, right? Uh, they, don't have as, they, they don't have as much responsibility, uh, especially if they're not married, right? They don't have a spouse. Um, they don't have kids. Now, all these things add up to it. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have a spouse, you're not married, or you, you don't have a girlfriend, you can do meetings. And I, I know this is in the overseas, not just overseas, in the U.S. as well. You can hang out with your team members at 10, 11, midnight, go out, go out to a bar, have drinks, hang out. I mean, that the, the network marketing extends to the social life as well because they have the time to do that. But when you're facing, you know, the first challenge is when you have a serious girlfriend. Right, that again takes time away. And then when you're married, then I mean you can't be. It's harder to. It's a bigger challenge. Now you still can. And a lot of people are supportive. Uh, it's much harder to do meetings at 11, 12 o'clock when you have a wife at home waiting for you, right? But the wife may understand the sacrifices uh, and, and allow you to do that. But then when you have the kids coming, it's just much harder. So I think in general, when people are older, they bond a little bit lesser. Uh, I mean, they still have the good relationships, but may not spend as much time together because it's just like their family commitments, other responsibilities. And that is true, uh, whether it's in the U.S., you know, Singapore, Malaysia, or the Philippines, Australia, I see that everywhere. Okay, so uh, it wouldn't be just unique to you. Uh, and, that, and you said the team in Australia, they're older, they bond well, and that's great. I'm very happy to hear that. It seems you're leading and uh, doing uh, well as a leader. Now, your second question is um, what is the best way to get people in one team to work together? I have observed that Gen Ys tend to bond together more in MLM than the older generation. Okay, we talked about that. Um, to, oh, actually, hold on. The second question is, oh, sorry, I'm reading the same question here. Okay, the second question is uh, your team overseas uh, have a lot of issues of working together. You know, your team in the Philippines. Um, you have a goal director in each of your legs. And that's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, a lot of people wish they had that problem. 
Uh, but it seems that after you left for Australia, there's less unity and less cooperation and the more it, problems have come up. Uh, I've caught a leadership meeting on the 20th of October. Um, and you hope that, you know, yeah, and I'll be more than happy to help you, Josie. I was hoping you could fit in for a call. I'll be more than happy to help you, okay, to speak to your team briefly. Now, here is the thing, though, and, and that would definitely help you because they know that you're connected with me. Uh, I'll definitely be more than happy to do that, do that since you're advanced diamond man, the master mem member. We can do maybe a 20 minutes, even 15 minutes. I'll edify you, talk, uh, you know, share a little bit, a few things, share a few stories. I'll be ha happy to do that. Now, the fact that they're not working together is not a surprise for me because you are like the parent. You started it, right? You're the leader. And it, I always compare this situation where it's like um, when you sponsor someone, they're like babies, babies in the family. And then they slowly become children and then they become adults, right? Um, now, even though you have a go director there, maybe they're just young adults. I, I always call it like, you know, when you're silver, you're like a teenager. You kind of can do a few things, maybe at the col university, college level, but you're not mature yet. And then when you become a gold, you're a young adult, right? And then maybe you become, depending on how long you've been in gold, your experience, you go further and further, you, you know, you become more and more developed as a leader. Um, the people there, especially if they're on different legs, they were cross line. They have no incentive to work together. The only reason they work together uh, it's because your relationship with you, out of mutual respect, and they follow you. When you leave, what else do they have in common? Of course, there's benefits of working together, but the leaders themselves, there's no financial interest, right? And as the teams get bigger and bigger, they will be conflict because, I mean, the leaders, the two goats know you, but maybe the third, fourth, fifth generation downlines. Uh, I mean, the, the two leaders, they respect each other, but the fifth generations of each of these leaders, they may not respect each other. They actually may be fighting among them, right? They're definitely less cooperation is one, the first step. And then there'll be maybe even fighting later on when it's, when it's so many generations deep. And uh, it's just like, you know, if you knew your grandmother uh, and you, you knew your cousin, yeah, you still do the same thing because you have the common uh, grandmother you respect. But after fourth and fifth, sixth level cousins, they're so removed, they don't even know the grandmother, they don't even know each other, right? They, they may be fighting, they don't even consider themselves family, maybe, right? Because they're so removed. So it's the same thing, you're the head of the family. And I think what uh, doing a call leadership meeting, that's a great first step. Um, it is challenging, you probably have to, may have to go there, invest time to go there. I mean, you can plan maybe a vacation out there, go out there, but more of a consistent week, um, maybe weekly is too much, at least once a month leadership meeting, talking, getting your teams to work together. You need to be more involved out there. And, and these are the same challenges I had when I was growing out in uh, the markets in, in, in Asia. Uh, that's why I had to spend considerable amount of time there. Um, but the good news is you at least you have gold directors. Um, and sooner or later, they may not work together anymore. They may want to do the separate teams. And as long as they are performing, you have to let them go. Uh, I mean, it's unfortunate, but you do, ha you do have to let them go if they're not performing. Uh, if, if they are performing, they want to go their separate ways. Okay, so um, I think it's common, like, especially you're not there, but you have realized you're the common link. You can't expect them. I think the, the, to summarize this is you can't expect them to get together and work together. If it does happen, that's a bonus you consider yourself lucky, right? Lucky. But again, they have no financial interest, especially if they're different lines. But you have to bring them together. So you need to play a much more active role consistently every day, getting the people to work together. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about the relationship and respect for each other. But leading you, you're like the fatherhead, right? Again, the kids, the teenagers themselves, they may do their own thing, but they need the mother, the father, whatever, to bring them together. Or if you have cousins, they need the, the head of the family. You're the head of the family there. So um, I hope that's helped, gives you something to think about. You need to play a bigger active role. And in terms of, yeah, working together, it all comes back to the leaders, you know. And in, in terms of other, the, 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 um, the newer distributors, they follow what the leaders do. They listen to what your, your gold directors do, your leaders. And, and if it's not a gold, it's a silver, it doesn't matter. They listen to what the leaders do. And you need to bring the leaders together up to a certain point until they're, they're earning, earning well. And eventually they want to break off and you have to let them break off. And they will probably want to break off at one point or not. If you, especially you're not there in the Philippines leading it. They have their own, everyone has a, if they're real leader types, everyone has their own ideas of doing things. I mean, you broke off, you went to Australia, 
right? So they may do the same thing. They may want to do one thing, one group have certain different methods. That day will come. Uh, but right now, it, be, it seems like it may be too early. You need to play active role and bring them together. All right, Josie, I hope that's helpful. And then I'll touch base with you later on email. And uh, that wraps up this uh, session. So thank you for watching my uh, network marketing training. Uh, again, members of my coaching mastermind groups, you can ask me questions on a weekly basis. Again, thanks for watching. This is Simon Chan. See you guys next time. Take care.